Good morning. With the successful and spectacular launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon early this morning, we're pleased to welcome you to the SpaceX CRS-4 post-launch news conference. Uh, here to share their thoughts on the success today are Sam Shamimi, the International Space Station Division Director from NASA headquarters in Washington, and Hans Koenigsmann, SpaceX Vice President of Mission Assurance and the Chief Engineer for today's launch. We'll uh, start off with some opening comments, and then we'll be happy to take questions. Sam? Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to say what a beautiful morning it was this morning with the uh, SpaceX launch on a beautiful night sky. You can even see the stars and, and the uh, Falcon 9 uh, launch vehicle going through the Constellation Orion this morning. It was a beautiful sight. Uh, I want to thank uh, the SpaceX team and the, all the NASA teams from around the country and CASIS and all the other scientific uh, and researchers that are participating on, on this, this flight and this mission. Uh, this launch this, from this morning uh, kicks off a very busy month for us on the International Space Station. Um, coming up this week, this Thursday, I believe, we have a uh, Soyuz launch, uh, launching a new, uh, our new increment to the space station. Also, we have a orbital uh, CRS launch coming up within a month and another progress flight, as well as Russian and U.S. EVAs coming up in the next month or so. Um, with that, uh, again, I want to congratulate SpaceX and Hans and his teams for our beautiful launch this morning, and that's all I have. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, nothing like a good launch. It's uh, um, <clears throat> just fantastic. Um, we worked very hard yesterday, and uh, Weather wasn't quite uh, playing along, and then today everything was, was beautiful. Weather cleared up in time, um, rain dissipated, and uh, from, from what I can tell at first glance, um, everything was, was really perfect. Uh, very good uh, orbit insertion, very nice flight. Um, Dragon um, propellant priming was perfect this time. Uh, very nice orbit, and solar arrays deployed on time. Everything was, was basically on time. Um, we uh, had success on the first stage too. We had a couple of good burns on the first stage. Um, I don't have any significant details, um, just sketchy light here and light there <laughs> details, and I saw it on the video, which always is exciting. Um, and then on the second stage also, we had a, a second burn that went very successful and uh, deposited the stage basically in a reentry uh, ellipse, I think south of New Zealand. So um, f from, from the SpaceX team, everybody is really happy. Everybody is uh, delighted. Uh, there's going to be a party. <laughs> and, uh, and I guess everybody, customer in SpaceX, are very, very happy. All right, thank you. Let's uh, take questions. Uh, please wait for the microphone. State your name and affiliation and to whom you're addressing the question. Uh, Rob? Hi, Rob Perlman with CollectSpace.com for Hans. Um, uh, two quick questions. One, uh, do you happen to know anything about the GNC bay door, when that will open, um, and the thrusters, when you'll get an, your first burn in? So thrusters are primed and, and work, and so that means they're already working. Um, we got attitude control. Uh, we, we're in teacher's communication. Um, GNC bay door is um, deployed in two hours, 30 minutes after launch, so that puts it at uh, another hour, basically. I, GNC board door opening is not, I mean, it's not that critical. I, I don't think this is uh, going to be a big deal. Yeah. Jason. Jason Ryan for SpaceFlightInsider.com. This one's for Hans. Uh, especially considering yesterday, given the wonky Florida weather, we know uh -huh. that you know, space flights uh, never really routine. And I, the quick question I have is, um, my understanding of CRS is it's supposed to go through 2016, and you have eight missions remaining in that in that manifest. Is there any wiggle room on, on NASA's part, or is that a, a really a hard date, or is that kind of a more nebulous date? How, how does that, that deadline work? So um, actually, that's a good point. So we did actually this mission in 14 days after the last mission, yeah? So that is, that is um, I'm actually amazed myself. I know the team was really working very hard, and, and a lot of things have to go right in order to make those 14 days turn around, but that obviously allows us to do a lot of missions if you keep that pace up. And, and I mean, there's, there's things we do right now. We have a second, uh, we're working on a second launch pad uh, here, so there's, there's ways to, to speed things even up more, yeah? and um, we're working on paralyzing um, 
integration even more. So um, having said that, um, we had actually in the last 12 months eight missions if I count everything together. And that is uh, also on the long term, of course, something that, that we need to increase. I don't see any problems in, in, in putting those missions in overall. Quick follow-up, at, at your conservative best, how, how frequently do you think SpaceX can follow up launch after launch? Is that two-week window what you think you could do, or do you think maybe you could even shave time you off that? I think we can do this faster. We can do it in, in, in a week. Um, that's, yes. Thank you. I mean, it's, as long as you do, do it parallel, I don't see any technical issues here. And the weather, as you point out, yes, the weather might delay a day, a day or two. But the, on the bright side, it's also it's pretty dynamic. So it's rarely that you have rain here for, for like uh, three or four days. It, it comes and goes. And I must also say the weather team is awesome. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, fi they find the holes in the sky and work really hard to... Um, to uh, to get us through the uh, through the uh, lightning and and uh, uh, any any danger zones on the clouds, so it's uh, it, it's working very well. And most of the mission don't have the one second launch window either. Uh. James, James Dean, Florida today. Um, Hans, for people who are uh, just taking note of the commercial crew award, uh, maybe seeing tonight's launch. Uh, obviously, we realize there's a lot of work going on on the Dragon. Uh, you'll be launching from a different pad, but other than that, it was like what people saw tonight kind of similar to uh, what they will see when yeah. astronauts are on board, or could you just speak to like just, you know, how, how Yeah, how I think this is going to be very similar. I mean, um, it, it's still two-stage rocket, so um, that's going to be very similar. The, the orbit is, is typical for, for an orbit to the space station, whether you go manned or just cargo. And we were a little bit manned too this time, right? <laughs> and uh, and so I think this is pretty much uh, what what you you will see. General, I actually have to admit I've never seen it from the outside, so <laughs> I. I <laughs> and just, uh, with respect to the booster again, I just wanted to make sure I understood it. What, what, what is there an attempt to to retrieve it, or were you not even trying that this time? The, with the Do you have boats out there, or yeah? Yeah, there's a boat out there, and the boat is uh, getting telemetry. Um, it will do a sweep tomorrow, but we don't expect to um, to have a, a stage floating um, there. I actually don't know. I mean, the um, I, I know that they saw a landing burn. They they, they saw a light, um, which is the the engine firing. But um, I have no further information at this point in time. It takes a while for the boat data to come back. But I'm pretty optimistic. Any further questions? Right here in the front row. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Shapiro. I'm with the Washington Times, and it's a little more of a broader question. Probably I'm, I'm playing catch up with everyone else here, but can you just in layman terms explain a little bit about the process now in terms of the Dragon separation from the Falcon 9 and the approach and the capture? Yeah. So Dragon um, separated from the second stage. Second stage um, went down and deposited again, and Dragon will perform a series of maneuvers to basically lift the orbit and make it circular under the station. It will catch up with the station in uh, roughly 48 hours, um, and when it arrives at the station, it is below the station, it's called the arbor. It's basically a radial bar going down from the station, and it will climb up that bar, um, and at certain times, uh, it will perform checks, checkouts, and um, those are go, no-go um, locations. Um, I believe the first one is at uh, 250 meters below the station, and then there's another one at 100 meters, another one at 30 meters, and then the last one, finally, at 10 meters. At 10 meters, Dragon will basically hover under the station. And um, if you know orbital mechanics, the lower you are, the faster you are, actually. So you have a tendency to fall forward. So you, you will see thrusters firing in the, in the forward direction um, continuously to keep Dragon at that, that spot. And then the, um, the station will use the robotic arm, will grab, grapple Dragon, and then, we'll, then we deactivate Dragon so that the station can move it, basically, and they attach it to um, one of the nodes on Harmony, I believe. I forgot the exact name. And then they open the door and... Uh, <laughs> <Start working. Yes. laughs> okay. Well, seeing no further questions, um, expounding on that, the uh, next SpaceX CRS-4 televised event on NASA television uh, begins 5 a.m. on Tuesday 
for the grapple, which is scheduled to occur at 7.04 a.m. on Tuesday. In the meantime, you can keep up with the status of Dragon at www.nasa.gov SpaceX. And you can keep up with the uh, comings and goings of the International Space Station at www.nasa.gov slash station. Thank you very much.